input shaft bearing, put that in, put the input shaft in, the counter shaft uh, bearing, and uh, see how far we get there, zip those in, and maybe even push some gears off the counter shaft to get those replaced. But man, this is hot. Gotta get this case nice and hot, got the bearings in the freezer so they should just drop in. We'll see. Okay, so this is our cold one. Set it down, tighten her up a little bit. Okay, and we'll get the gear. Hopefully it goes right on. Here we go. Ready? Oh shit, not even close, man. Not even close. It's not gonna want to go. Nope. We gotta figure something else out. Okay, so what we did, you probably saw it, was this guy was heated up to about 300 degrees. We've had this in the freezer for probably a day and a half or so, all right? So then we put it in the press over there, and then we just went to town. Uh, we were able to get it to kind of fit the very beginning, which helped out, and then just kind of drove it home. It straightened it, trued itself up, and uh, so now we got to put it back in the freezer so that we can put it in the case and put get the case all nice and warm um, and go from there. So probably another day before we get this all back to where it needs to be. So back to the freezer we go. Okay, so we kind of missed this. Um, one looks white because it's frosty. This one we came out of the freezer. And so what we did is we put the two shafts together. You can't, you can't put these in separate. You gotta put them in together. So what we did is we zip tied them together through the clutch fork uh, pieces that slide the synchros back and forth. So that kept them together, meshed the gears together. So we were able to slip it in. Now they're on this counter shaft at the very end, the bottom, there's a plate that's gonna wanna slide out. It's part of the clutch assembly for whatever gear is down there. Um, it's part of that the uh the synchro piece anyways we took grease and smeared it in there and that kept it up enough we tried some tape but because of this it just still has a film on it um so it wouldn't stick so uh we pushed it pressed it in place it went very easy we did not heat up the bearings or anything um, but this had been in the freezer for about uh, a day or so now if we come under here now we can see that's our bearing um, and then you can see the center of the shaft and it's pretty well there. So we're, we're content with where we're at. We're going to leave that and then, uh, we'll start the rest of the process. So in order to get that shift fork down there, um, the synchro piece, the selector I had to pick up, and then it's kind of tight, um, kind of really got to work, work it. I, I did have to move the, the gear set back and forth, trying to 
you know, just get it in there. But it did fit, obviously, um, and those are the bronze guides. So um, now we'll move on to uh, this one. Um, and again, the, uh, the pickup point, see that lip down there? Um, they all need to be uh, orientated the correct direction or else it's not going to work. Okay, so got both the fork, uh, shift forks in place along with the shifting rods. Um, I was gonna install the shift forks both first, but then I realized that I gotta get um, the shift rods in place. So um, you need to install the lower shift fork first with the rod, and then you can um, come in here and tighten these up uh, for the shift. Uh, these are the pivot points for the shift forks. Um, I would suggest making sure that you keep jostling these uh, shift forks while you're um, starting to run these in. And I do it by hand uh, because they can bind up and you want to make sure that you don't get it all bound up. So um, did the bottom one, this one, shift forks are in place, pads are in place, rods are in place. Now we're going to put the top plate in. So I had to press that piece on. I went ahead and assembled the rest of um, the rest of it, and I, you got to put that uh, lockering in. Next is all of this stuff. Ta -da. Um, so we'll put that on. So get this stuff out of the way. I tried to heat that up put it on and uh, it didn't work. I put some ice packs on this and then put that uh, gear piece next to the heater or in front of the heater and it just, it wasn't enough, so it didn't work. Uh, next is this gear. Uh, so I'm gonna, it's this one. I think it's in good shape. A little, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and clean this, so. Um, what I have is just, I'm just using carb cleaner, um, just cleaning it over there, um, over this, uh, just spray it, both sides, clean it out. Get all the nasty grit if there is any out of it. And then I'm going to loop it back up and then we'll put it on there. Looks good, feels good. Right. I'm just using, right now, I'm just using heavy duty 30 weight uh, oil. Uh, I still need to run the town and get, uh, get some actual transmission fluid, or not, sorry, gear fluid for the uh, six speed. Slides right there. Next is the big old gear. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this too. Just wanna make sure everything's nice and clean, so. All the surfaces are, no sense in having to read. Mating 
surfaces. So this will slide on top of that, and then we will, I think the next gear set may need to be pressed on. I don't know, we'll see. All right, I'm gonna lube that up a little bit. going to engage, kind of slip down. So I'm going to have to figure out. There. So I had to rotate the bottom piece um, in order to get that to sit down, but it looks like everything is going to be just fine there. Uh, so still rotate. Looks good. We'll keep going. Um, next is this gear. And I'm gonna, whoo. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought this piece has to be pushed on, so we'll, we'll have to slap that in there. So I'll leave that there. That goes on top of that. Uh, but this guy, this collar piece, is gonna have to slip. I have no idea if that if those slides need to be indexed too. I almost bet they do, so it gets proper lubrication. Um, what I'm talking about is these right here and these. So anyhow, uh, so we'll go back over to the press starting to get heavy. Um, now I'm gonna look up too to see if there's if this thing needs needs to uh, be lined up. Okay so this is the piece that we just pressed on. Um, I was worried about it lining up with this gear because they both have holes where the oil would go. If you look at it though when you rotate it, it actually spins off the shaft different to the gear, so it doesn't matter. So food for thought when you're pressing it on, um, just make sure it doesn't matter, it just matters how far you get it down. So, come on in! All right, after that, got the next needle bearing, the gear and everything else, and then we should be set with that shaft. So I got this pressed on, like we just said, from yesterday. So next is this uh, bearing, gear set, and then the next sinker. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up with some uh, car cleaner, and then we will get those on there. this is pretty important here um, so there is a little clip it's this little guy right down there um, need a pointer uh, it's this little guy here you probably saw it in the before when we were taking this part this is a little it's got a leg that comes this way and a leg that goes this way under this plate now you kind of got to fish that in there's two spacers under this plate under here um, So, yeah, you can see the back one right there near the gear, right back there. Um, they're round, so uh, you got to kind of fish this all together. I wanted to 
do this before I put the top set on to make sure everything on this was installed properly. So that's what I'm doing now. So the little spring does a bit more than what I thought. I thought it was just there to hold some things, but it's not. It actually acts as the spring for this plate. So when you're shifting, um, this is what locks it into place and uh, pass the slide between these two rods as well as these two rods. So it kind of plays place in here. It has slip. These don't actually tighten it down. They just hold it in there. So you gotta make sure you got that spring in there. Next, we'll put the, uh, this main rod. Um, again, we took out this piece, uh, which so this slips on down in there. Um, this guy. This is your main shifter rod point. This is you know what changes the gears. So this was the original. You can see that this is kind of beat up. The other ones actually were chunked off. This was probably the better of them, but uh, you can pull that off and replace it with a bronze. That way it, it works a little better uh, as far as, uh, you know, feel. And we'll break plastic off. So um, again, next is to uh, put this in place. Like so. And you gotta kind of fish this around on the back side. Bring it a little bit and it'll slide down. There you go. Okay, so that's that one. I'll have to look back at my video to see which one this rod is which one this is. This obviously goes to here, but I don't know. I'll have to check to see. I think it's the outside portion. So may end up having to install that first before we put this in. I'm not sure. I'll have to go look back and look at the video. Be right back. Okay, so this rod and the clutch fork or shift fork would not fit with everything here and it won't fit over this gear. So Pretty sure that's why I didn't remove that until we had this whole assembly up and off. So in order to get it back on, I have <clears throat> pushed out the roll pin that holds this in this hole. Uh, the orientation, for future reference, uh, you can see it there. It slopes down. Um, the key pieces here, excuse me, the key pieces here are to the right of the bracket. Uh, this side of the bracket's larger than this side, so for my benefit and everybody else's, there you go. That's the information I have on this. So I'm going to pull this rod out. I'm going to go put this fork on and then slide this in and then punch that, uh, that roll pin back in. Okay, so I know I didn't videotape it, but I do want to give an overall video of how this thing's put together so when you look at it, you can do it too. Um, so these two I put in before the plate and then put the plate in. You will want to do, um, you can put the plate in and then you can put this guy in, leave this guy out and you can still move this plate enough to get this guy in. It's got enough play. Um, so I have it sitting in there and then you gotta wiggle this in, make sure the spring is on this side, make sure the spring's on this side and that these levers are engaged with the rods. Now this whole transmission is in neutral. I know that because when I take this top gear um, and the bottom I can spin them both different directions and um, there's no direct drive so I know that all the shifts are in neutral right now which is I'm assuming where this is at at least that's what I can figure for right now so next will be to press on this top piece this top gear um, and then uh, basically this full assembly will be done and then we'll the only things left is to install the uh, the uh, fork, the shift fork, and this is the reverse gear into the uh, case. And of course, we've got vent tubes and detent springs, um, and 
couple of those pieces so um, that should be it but I'll videotape that and hopefully we can get this thing done okay so we got this pressed on everything works there there is no locking ring so that's just pressed on you got to make sure that you put this on correctly um, I don't know if I can get it go down right now or not anyways this won't come up and off it's built like that so make sure you put this on the correct orientation next I got to order these slides it's for this fork which go to this guy once that's complete we can hook that up put that on that'll be done next we're gonna this is the reverse gear that goes in here right here and bolts to the outside with that bolt um, and then we have the detent spring or excuse me not the detent the uh, fork holders that go through the case um, right here for this one and then we still got to torque this down. This is the counter shaft. Do the front seal, do the other seal, and then all the detent pieces and the final piece to put the end, and that's it. So uh, probably, probably speed this up, get everything on. We will have to press the case on with this bearing. It presses onto the shaft here, so we'll still have to do that. And that will be the final piece. Uh, we got the magnet in, and I think everything else is ready to go. So keep going to get the final clutch fork in um, shifter fork sorry uh, you put those uh, bronze pads in yes they are bronze I was said uh, brass before but they are bronze uh, you got to have this uh, selector down and then you got to wiggle it back and forth to get in there um, once this is all the case is in, you know, once the top piece is on here, uh, the pivot points for the uh, shifter forks is held in by these through here. So it will no longer move. But just to give you, if you are doing this, um, that was kind of a, a little bit of a pain, but um, it's good now. So I'll, I'll select this piece back up. And then when we press the case on, because you have to press it on in order to get that exterior bearing over this um, output shaft uh, and everything else needs to line up then we will uh, put those retainer pins in um, screw those in okay so you can see we tried to put the case on um, we had gas maker on it we pushed it we pressed it on with the press everything seemed to be going well the issue was I saw the case jump and then it seated well I thought everything was fine um, then I started trying to go through the gears with the shifter and there was issues uh, It wouldn't get out um, It wouldn't get into neutral. So after I removed the case I found out that in doing so when we press the case on this shift rod here as you can see it's it's loose um, The only reason is, is because the only thing that's holding it in there is at this point and at this point where it goes into the rear case that presses on that controls this this uh this shifting fork um this is for the reverse gear i i do believe what happened was is when i installed it it then pushed this and pushed that down um and engaged i can't get to do it right now one-handed anyways it engaged reverse so it would it would it locked everything up it would not get into neutral um, everything seemed to be fine, but it was just, it was, it was jammed in there. Um, so remove the case, right? Now we have an issue because had an issue. This is one of the cases where you can see what it looks like normally. And what we're looking at is this piece here. This is a small little roller bearing that that rod goes into. So when you press this case on, you have to be sure that that rod is lined up. So be sure if you're doing this, pressing this on, make sure to have that lined up. Um, what I ended up having to do, this is the case that we pressed on. You can now see, I had to chew the crap out of this thing with chisels, hammers, and everything else um, to get to the point where we could remove it. Now, now I was thinking, well, crap, now, how are we going to get another bearing? Well, remember, I have three of these. So I decided, well, let's see if we can pull one. Well, that was going to be an issue, right? Because if I got to pull this, then I'm going to have to go through the same process where I have to cut up the case to get to it. 
What I did notice in these is that this bearing, this uh, same bearing looks to be the same. It's got the same housing, it's got the same slip, it's got the ball bearings in it and everything else. So I came to my least favorite case because this piece is broke and this is part of the shifting uh, where you mount the shifter. Um, this, this one was actually good, but the, again, the mount where you mount it to the, the whatever, um, the trans mount on this is broke out. This is my best case. That's why I wanted to kind of try to keep this. Long story short, I came over to here to this case, uh, flipped this case over, and was able to knock this out. Fairly simple. I used a 3 8 ratchet. Um, this guy. This is a, what's this? That's a pro grade T50. But I put this in there with the hammer, knocked it out clean. Um, so we will be utilizing this bearing and this housing. I cleaned it up with this sanding roll. Um, I'm going to take it outside, spray it down, get all this crap out of it because this is all residual from the gasket maker, but then also crap that just, you know, from uh, um, beating this thing up. I also did take a acetylene torch. You can see the little discoloration here. I heated it from the outside um, to get it nice and warm. Um, that way it allowed it to be a little bit more malleable, expanded the aluminum enough to get a screwdriver down in there, pry it in, and then take a pair of needle nose pliers, turn it, and pull it out. This took me probably, I'd say, an hour and a half to do. I'm sure there's better ways. Um, if I knew how this was going to go, I, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have screwed with it, messed with it. So as, if you can see this one, somebody did the exact same thing. This is a different case. I didn't use this one, but somebody put it in. The, uh, the rod was here, and then it slipped in. So they didn't push the rod. So when you're pushing the case down, you got to have something that pushes that rod over. Otherwise, you'll do this. It'll, it'll ding this uh, casing of this needle bearing or this ball bearing, this guy here. And then it, the rod won't go, it, it, it will mine, it sheared a piece off and it got caught. So then the shifter rod didn't want to do its thing. So um, that's why I went ahead and pulled it off. So that's what we're replacing. Unfortunately, uh, about five seconds worth of work turned into two hours. Ta-da! Complete. I just got done pushing this down. Still need to put the bolts in. Got the sealing in. Um, I, when I pressed this on with the press over there, right there, um, I ran a four by four across here, but I had to use a uh, kind of a, something to fill the gap, two pieces of metal to fill that gap when I was pushing on. Otherwise you'll hit this uh, output shaft. Uh, went on just fine. Once I got everything set, I noticed that the shaft, these uh, input underneath in the output shaft were very difficult to turn. Um, so I was a little worried that I got something bound up or something didn't do something right. But um, what I ended up doing was I put it on its side, took a little <laughs> rubber mallet, and just started tapping on the shafts and trying to work them, basically, you know, turning them. Um, and that freed it up a ton. So I just think that once you push everything in, it's kind of bound up a little bit. So you got to just kind of work it loose a little. It's fine now. Everything works. Um, I haven't been, I haven't tried switching the gears or anything like that because I don't know uh, exactly the pattern without the shifter. So parts that are left, we got the detent pieces, uh, the front seals, and then the, uh, that's the shifter. Um, block i believe uh what you know you hit up against um and then the counter shaft securement that's it so that's that's where i'm gonna leave this i'm gonna call this done um next time when i get all this done this we mounted to this and yes we are still working on the intake stuff We're getting there just a sneak preview um and yes, those are AN fittings. So, yeah, we're there, man. Hopefully I put it together right. <laughs> if anybody sees anything, let me know, because by the time you guys probably see this, this won't be anywhere near close to running or probably not even amounted to the motor yet. So if I need to take this thing apart, uh, let me know. 
you know, I think uh, I thought it went back together fairly well. So I don't know. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find out. If not, hey, Ben, Ben Calamar or Calamar, Calamar. Man, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I never met you, but heard your name a lot about these MT82s. If you're out there and you want to help me out here, man, you just holler. <laughs> All right. Till next time. See ya.